Hello, my name is Aaron Heineman, Inorganic Product Line Leader for Perkin Elmer. In today's talk, I will discuss new sample introduction apparatus for laser ablation ICPMS. In this talk, we will go over why laser ablation ICPMS, challenges in analyzing samples for laser ablation, strategies to overcome these challenges, and then some conclusions. General consideration for analytical requirements must take into account that the sample is usually small or that only a small portion may be taken to perform the analysis. There are a wide range of compositions that may be encountered in a variety of matrices. Low detection limits are required because the elements of interest may be present in small amounts, but also the sample is usually small, so digestion would, be, would dilute the analytes of interest. Fewer spectral and physical interferences will ensure an accurate result in a variety of matrices. Results of metals measurements are often used to assign a sample to a general class of materials or distinguish the sample from other samples in the same class. In classification, accurate results with a little long-term change in bias are required. For discrimination, short-term precision is important. So instead of looking at the bulk sample, Laser sampling is a technique used to directly ablate small amounts of material for direct introduction into the ICE-PMS. Some of the reasons to consider this type of sample introduction are dissolution concerns and perhaps spatial resolution information. With laser ablation ICE-PMS, the sample can be used to gain qualitative, semi-quantitative, or even quantitative information about the sample. So some of the benefits of laser sampling included time savings and less chance of contamination because of reduced sample preparation or handling. There will also be fewer spectral interferences seen because the sample vapor entering the plasma contains no water or acid, reducing the oxide levels than you'd find in traditional liquid analysis. As with many analytical techniques, there are also limitations. The availability of blanks, calibration standards, and internal standards can limit the quality of quantitative data. The heterogeneity can limit the analysis of the bulk material, and many samples may be required to get a good average. Although, as instrumentation developers and vendors, we can't really work on improving standards and samples, we can work on improving the workflow so sample preparation, sample throughput, speed of analysis, and analytical precision. And we'll discuss that in this talk. In laser ablation, we rely on a box or a sample chamber. And therefore, that relies on an operator to regularly switch out samples, analyze reference materials, and standardize laser ablation conditions. This video shows the current approach. An important aspect of throughput and quality laser data is the ablation chamber. Although there are a variety of chamber designs on the market, in this study we had two different models available to us to test spatial resolution or the ability of the system to get reproducible data regardless of where in the chamber the ablation took place. Shown here in our lab is the Nexium 2000 ICPMS coupled to the NWR213 solid state laser. We don't always run laser ablation, so an important aspect is the quick connection between the laser and the ICPMS, or disconnection. With the Nexian, it is as simple as pulling out the liquid sample introduction and replacing it with the laser introduction. In laser ablation, the creation of ablated particulate matter is what's happening. We find that the large orifice sampler and skimmer cones on the Nexian ICPMS are more tolerant to that type of plasma loading. The Nexian's universal cell technology, with dynamic bandpass tuning and a true quadruple-based reaction cell, can help us look at heavily interfered upon analytes, and the benefits of EDR technology allows the operator to selectively attenuate the ion signals of specific masses, which is particularly useful in laser ablation, 
where you may only have a few shots at a particular sample. Briefly, I would like to give you an overview of Perkinelmer Ice Cream Ass history. Perkinelmer has a proud pedigree of innovation, beginning with the Land 250 as the first commercial ice cream ass. The Land series then had a variety of innovative additions to it when in 1999 the Dynamic Reaction Cell was released. In 2010, the Nexian series was introduced, leading us to 2017 with the Nexian 1000 and 2000 systems. The LN platform that included models from 250 to 9000 dominated the ice PMS market for many years. Several innovations like turbo molecular vacuum pumps, the free running generator, new optics, dual mode detector, and the dynamic reaction cell were incorporated in these instruments. The DRC was truly a breakthrough in the reduction of spectral interferences and lowering detection limits. A new chapter of Perkin Elmer Ice PMS instruments was launched in 2010 by the introduction of the Nexian 300. It was a benchtop unit with a quadruple line deflector, triple cone interface, an auto XYZ stage, and new Synergistic software. These design changes led to an instrument with much higher sensitivity and lower background. In 2017, the Nexian 2000 was released, this time boasting an extremely small footprint new solid-state RF generator, and a new load coil design. The Nexian 1000 was released a year later. During the Nexian generation instruments, new application innovations were released with nano and single cell capabilities and software packages that were supported by the fast scanning capabilities of the Nexian platform. These, along with many other innovations, have kept Perkin Elmer at the forefront of application advances. And now, in 2020, we are proud to add to the Nexian series of ice PMS, the Nexian 5000 multi-quadruple ice PMS. So the way we tested the sample chamber spatial reproducibility was by inserting NIST 612 glass reference materials around the corners of the chamber, in the center, and at the sides. Then, we bladed for the same amount of time on each puck. The average value for each ablation is then compared against each other across the mass acquisition range. Shown here are the ablation profiles for the nine ablation lines. As you see, spatial reproducibility is less than 2% for all elements across the mass range. Essentially, the limitation now is the heterogeneity within the NIST glass. Then, for the 2-Vol-3 test, the same experiment was performed using the same sample distribution scheme. Note that the spatial reproducibility was again less than 2% RSD for all elements. However, ablation to ablation time was cut in half. So, if we look at some of the laser ablation ICPMS automation drawbacks, or current drawbacks for in the automation of laser ice PMS. Really, the rate limiting step of laser ablation was previously the sample chamber. If you look at the sample chambers that uh, people are using in la laser ablation ice PMS, uh, you can usually fit about five samples in there, maybe 10, and an experienced operator was required to exchange samples every four to 10 analyses. However, we will discuss new technology how we can automate this. We all have experience with automation for liquid ICPMS analysis, and this is the standard we expect when we mention automation. Here are some typical 40 millimeter X-ray fusion beads. In the world of forensic analysis, we can use these fusions to prepare various solids, such as soils, as this will allow for homogenization and provide us with a rapid screening and fingerprinting technique. So again, with the sample chamber, we have a limited sample space. So if we imagine uh, our samples are 40 millimeters, such as those beads, as an example, a standard ablation chamber can only fit five in the chamber. Now, we could go to a larger chamber. Now, 
uh, such as 150 millimeter shown here. And we're going to be able to obviously put more samples into that larger chamber. But this comes at a cost of extending chamber purge times and act impacting the, the throughput of the system. Alternatively, we could cut the samples. We could cut your samples down into smaller pieces. However, by cutting samples, by doing more sample preparation work, that's going to extend uh, the sample handling time and potentially contaminate your samples. One response to these laser ablation ICPMS limitations is the NWR Auto. It can handle from 20 to 2,000 samples using sealing technology to ensure that each sample in standard analysis is totally reproducible and performed under precisely the same conditions. Here you see the carousel used to introduce samples to the laser. On the left are the extra beads and on the right is shown copper pellets in the carousel. These carousels can be adapted to handle a variety of sizes and shapes. For example, NIST glass reference material pucks can be mounted similarly to the copper pellets so that standardization and quality control checks are easily and rapidly performed. If we review the process without sample automation, you can see that switching out the chamber has a drastic effect on sample throughput. Here is the sample exchange using NWR Auto. With the automation of the sample introduction, sample throughput is increased by a factor of 10. And operator involvement is significantly reduced. So some of the advantages of automating loading and sample changeover is, is the rapid uh, changeover from sample to sample. Also, a short time to the result since we don't have to wait for the chamber to be set up and purged each time. Also, a reduction in the complexity. So increasing the number of samples does not increase complexity. Okay, so another improvement in sample introduction to the Nexian ICPMS is demonstrated well with this application that was recently performed on the system. Some of you may know zircon dating by quadruple based laser ablation ICPMS is quite common. Instrument performance and sensitivity is now adequate for aging young zircons. The market is moving towards providing rapid screening of large batches of zircons, which in the past was slowed down by the chamber and high resolution techniques. Another update to laser ablation ICPMS offering is the dual concentric injector or DCI. It is shown here installed in the Nexing 2000 ICPMS. It has been designed to have a minimum dead volume and spots for particle deposition leading to the injector of the ICPMS. The dual concentric injector reduces washout significantly. By reducing this washout from ablation to ablation, less data is trimmed from the analysis. In addition, a considerable reduction in analysis time can be gained. In this example here, you can see a six second ablation. Prior to using the DCI, the ablation time was about 120 seconds to do the same zircon dating. This slide demonstrates the stability of the six second zircon dating spots analyzed sequentially. In these examples, we are dating the samples using lead 206 and uranium 238. In the first example, the mean age of the sample is 1 billion 66 years plus or minus 13.5 million years. In the second sample, the mean age is 500 six years plus or minus 38.29 million years. In conclusion, inorganic analysis can contribute forensic information and is really beginning to take a larger role in the forensic laboratories. Next in ICPMS series, with unique features such as universal cell technology, extended dynamic range, and the ability to use either a single quad or a multi-quadruple instrument, such as the Nexium 2000 or 5000, 
has many advantages for these laboratories. The Nexium is easily coupled to a laser for small sample consumption, preserving samples for further analysis. And as shown earlier, many advances have occurred to improve spatial resolution and sample introduction and throughput. Thank you for your time today. Please reach out if you have any questions regarding the materials presented. Have a good day.